great pleasure to have joining us today on our book talk segment. Man, it's a really interesting book. Kind of goes into uh, how our minds work, particularly when we uh, get a little mad. It's called Why We Snap, Understanding the Rage Circuit in Your Brain. We're joined today by Dr. R. Douglas Fields from up in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. And, uh, Doctor, good to talk with you. How are you today? Great. Thank you, Doc. Yeah, I had a chance to, to read through the book, and uh, uh, I guess we all kind of wonder what, what that uh, final little breaking point is that causes us to kind of go off the edge a little bit. Uh, you, you tell a story in the book, uh, this kind of happened to you, right, involving your daughter, I believe. That, that's kind of what gave you the idea to, to put this into a book form, is that right? Well, right. I, I was uh, on my way to a scientific meeting in Europe, and we had a little extra time, and my 17-year-old daughter was with me. Um, coming up out of the subway system, suddenly I was robbed, and I found that I instantly engaged and fought back to get my wallet back. I'm, I've got this guy in a headlock rolling on the ground, and at that moment it bubbles up to my consciousness, what the heck are you doing, you know? And I realized, um, you know, that I didn't think. It didn't involve the cortex. I never would have done that if I thought about it. And then I realized we've got this circuitry in the brain that can unleash a violent, aggressive response in response to something in our environment, uh, and it does not involve conscious thought. It works. Conscious thought in a threatening situation is too slow. So that was the inspiration for the book. Yeah, and, and you always kind of wonder, now obviously you're protecting a family member or something like that, or protecting your life, that, that, that's a different situation, but you often see people that just snap for seemingly no reason. So other things are going on in their head, I guess, right? Well, that's the thing. So I realized that it was the same situation where I responded in that situation to protect myself and my daughter. It was the same kind of thing that happens in snapping and that, uh, when somebody has an inappropriate response, the stuff we read about every day in the paper, right. somebody snapping in a domestic dispute, and it's the same circuitry, but it's the same circuitry. We have a circuitry because we need it. We, are, we have to have violence as a species to protect ourselves, to get food, whatnot. It's just that it is released inappropriately sometimes. Then we call it snapping. We don't call it snapping if it's appropriate. We, the same brain circuits are activated, and uh, if, it, if it's appropriate, we call it, oh, a quick thinking or, or heroism. So, you know, a third of the book is when this circuitry works as intended um, and results in, in, in the uh, aggression to protect um, others. Uh, so, yeah. You call it uh, life morts, right? That's uh, the term you use, the different situations that this happens, right? Yes. So we have the capability for violence. It's wired into the brain. It's in an unconscious part of the brain because, again, going to the cortex is too slow. Um, it's in a part of the brain called the hypothalamus, the same place that controls sexual uh, behavior, hunger, and thirst. Um, and if you stimulate this region in the hypothalamus called the hypothalamic attack region, the animal will instantly engage in violence and kill an animal. Um, and so the question is, what trips this trigger? Um, and a behavior like this, getting involved in a fight, is not going to be tripped by just anything. Very specific triggers will activate this response because you're risking your life and limb. Um, and, it, and new research is showing that there are different triggers in response to different threats. These are different circuits, different neural circuits in the brain that will activate this attack response. For example, one trigger will be activated in a, in a mother protecting her young from attack, but a completely different circuit and a different trigger will be activated if she is protecting herself. Um, and it's a different circuit. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, like you said, you, you, we need that uh, as a matter of survival. Maybe going back to the days before we had uh, all the creature comforts, you needed a lot more. But uh, but it's still there in our brains, right? Built into us. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we have the same brain that we had 100,000 years ago when we were roaming the plains of Africa, but we're in a completely different environment now, and our brain is grappling with uh, situations in an environment that it wasn't designed to deal with, like driving a car. And that will set off the these uh, aggressive responses in inappropriately in many situations. Yeah, you hear the term road rage. It seems to be the last 10 or 15, maybe a little longer that we've heard that term. Uh, uh, I imagine they didn't have quite that when people were just riding horses around, right? <laughs> if you ran somebody, uh, you somebody's horse on another horse. <laughs> well, road rage, rage is a good example. Yeah, that we, we weren't designed, uh, you know, at a time when we uh, drove cars, but 
actually driving hits all nine of these triggers. Um, and it's little wonder that uh, there's so much rage on the highway. Um, but, the, the, but the key to diffusing this is, is not to just, you know, try to suppress your anger, but to understand why am I angry? Why am I suddenly angry when this guy pulls his car in front of me? Why am I consumed with anger uh, to the extent that I want to get in a fight rather than some other behavior? And it's because it has inappropriately hit this, this uh, trigger for violence. Yeah, is it, a, is it a competition thing? You don't want somebody to beat you, or is it actually you're, you're protecting your life because somebody could have taken it away from you by doing something stupid on the road? I guess it's a combination, right? Well, no, uh, it's, there are nine different triggers that will right. activate a violent response, and, and road driving hits all of them. So yeah. when somebody cuts in front of you, you're protecting your environment, your territory, the same trigger that an animal would defend its home, or you would defend your home or property with violence. That's inappropriate on driving, but that's one. Another one would be if you're feeling restrained. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the S uh, in the life morts demonic. So, um, yeah, it's different, different situations encountered on the road activate these different triggers of rage. Interesting, you talk in the book as well uh, how men and uh, women's brains uh, differently uh, respond to, to these things. Uh, talk a little about that, if you would. Yeah, so, uh, you know, a female's not going to get into a physical fight with a, with a man who weighs 100 pounds more than her. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and so men and women's brains, due to the traditional role through, uh, you know, the evolution of our species, respond to threats differently. One of the most important factors in aggression and violence is sex. Um, 90 percent of violent criminals and crime are men in prisons are men um, but also 90 percent of the people who have been awarded uh, uh, medals for heroism by the Carnegie Foundation are also men um, so women have different responses uh, to threat they have a different neural uh, neurological neural science basis for that I'm going into this in, in more in the book but um, you, you know it, it's fascinating how men and women differ in response to threats based upon uh, you know, the, the different kinds of threats men and women, women have and, and the traditional role, roles of men and women. Yeah, women, uh, I think you talk about it, uh, they respond to uh, insults uh, differently. Guys kind of do it to each other, and it, it's more, it's mostly uh, you know, a good-natured thing, but women respond differently, so that, that can trigger it, right, in women. Well, both, both males and females have all the same nine triggers, but yes, different triggers are, are respond more or more prone to one gender than the other, for sure. Um, but but also the response is different. When my daughter and I were in Barcelona, we were pursued by this gang uh, for two hours. Um, and um, it, it quickly became apparent that my daughter was much better at picking out these bad guys than I was. <laughs> and neuroscience backs that up. Female brain is very good at detecting threats. Because females, look, you and I don't have to worry about getting sexually assaulted, uh, you know, as we wander around the street. And a female can never, you know, not have that in the back of her mind. Females are, uh, have uh, defense mechanisms in the brain that are, uh, that are very good at detecting threats based on uh, facial characters. Um, in sudden stressful situation, they switch to use the left hemisphere and they begin to look at the details of the situation. That's why my daughter was picking out these bad guys and I didn't see them in the crowd. Mm. And the man uh, shifts to use the right hemisphere. I'm looking at the big picture. I'm trying to come up with schemes, how to you know, outwit these guys as they're chasing us uh, down back alleys and things. Um, because you can't do both. You can't have a you know, big picture view of things and also be looking at the details. Men and women cleave that way in the response to threats. You put those two things together, though, and it's quite a dynamic pair. <laughs> yeah, it's a scary situation you were, you were in, but thankfully you got through it okay, and then you got a book out of it, so even, even better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, uh, you know, not only the, uh, the fascinating neuroscience and meeting all these amazing people from athletes to SEAL Team 6 members, the neuroscience was fascinating, but this is a case that I think can really help people in, uh, in their own lives, and it helps us I read about this every day in the paper of people right. snapping and violence, and I want to do something about it. Why We Snap is the name of the book. We've been talking with uh, the author, uh, Dr. R. Douglas Fields. Dr. Give out a website. People can uh, get more information on the book or contact you if they like. Yeah, it's rdouglasfields.com. Well, Dr. Pleasure talking to you, and hopefully we can do it again. Thanks for being with us today. Well, thank you very much. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. 
Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.